Hi, after getting the introduction of the ES production function, now we will learn about its details and that is about the elasticity of substitution, its calculation. Before going ahead, a reminder to you uh, to support this channel by subscribing it and liking the material that is liked by you and also to click the bell icon so that you get the latest and updated material from this channel. Now this is the VES production function that we have studied in our last video. Uh, here for the sake of simplicity we can start with the assumption of CRS that is constant transfer scale which implies that instead of V we can write 1 and here we are going to do it. We have written 1 and in the product 1 disappears. This is why we have this form of the VES production function. Now we know the general formula of velocity of substitution which is equal to this. And for that, uh, we have to do some calculations. Uh, this f is basically representing the original or actual production function, which is here. This would be the derivative of it with respect to labor. And this would be the derivative of it with respect to capital. And this would be the derivative of fl with respect to capital. That is the cross partial derivative. So these three terms uh, are missing and we are going to find out these values. So we start with the very first one, which is fl which in other words is uh, marginal product of labor in VES or any other production function. So we have differentiated it with respect to labor here. K is considered as capital, uh, constant for the time being. And here we have simple differentiation that we have learned before. So the constants or variables that are considered constant for this partial derivative with respect to labor, they are appearing outside, whereas the remaining term containing labor is in the derivative sign. Now we have applied the power rule here, this is the power and uh, 1 uh, is reduced from the power and this is the derivative of the term without any other power except for 1 and this is the solution. You can pause the video and verify the results. However, once we reach here where the power of uh, this term is minus a, we know that the original function is having a power of 1 minus a and if we can develop this original function inside this uh, whole term. Uh, it will be easy for us to solve because if I go back and look into this formula, this formula has the original production function in it. So it will be easier for us to get it cancelled out and the term, the final result will be quite uh, simplified. So with this foresight, we are trying to develop Q here, that is the original production function. And for that, I can introduce 1 in its power and definitely for that, the base should be the same with power 1. So I have multiplied with the same base with power 1. But in equation, when we introduce a new term, we have to divide it as well so that the balance of the equation remains. So uh, this is the term on the whole that we have uh, produced and introduced here. This is for creating the similarity with Q so that it gets cancelled out in this formula where Q is appearing in the symbol of F. So the upper term is now added here uh, in its part and the remaining term that is the term in the denominator it is there as it is now this term as we were desiring it to be has become the original production function that is q because all of these terms are equal to q therefore instead of this i'm writing q whereas the remaining one minus a will remain here and in the denominator this term was generated which is kept so i get the uh, fl that is the marginal product of labor and this is the form of it which has q so that it gets concise and also gets cancelled out this q value. Now the other derivative that is fk that is the marginal product of capital in this VES production function will require labor to be constant for the time being and capital will be considered as the variable term. So in this case capital is appearing in this term as well as in that term. So now we have two terms containing capital so there will be product rule that we are going to apply. So A is kept outside because it is a coefficient and uh, it is being treated like this and uh, the remaining term will be differentiated. Here for the sake of understanding I am denoting this with gx that is the first function and this uh, with hx that is the other function which are to be subjected to product rule of differentiation. So the first term having its derivative and the other term as it is in the form of a product plus the derivative of the second term and the first term as it is in the form of a product. So this is the product rule of differentiation that we have studied before and it is being applied here. Now the simplification of the derivative terms should be there 
as you can see we have uh, did the differentiation of k raised to the power a and this is also differentiated this term that was there and uh, it becomes h bar x uh, in terms of the general formula now uh, this is also power rule so you can pause the video and see its application furthermore when we simplify this the uh, result would be this this is the first part of the expression this is the second part after plus sign and this has been reduced to ba uh, because labor is treated as a constant and k derivative would be equal to 1. These ones are also cancelled out so we have minus a as the bar. Now we can further simplify this if it is possible. Uh, the simplification actually is appearing in the form of this term which we have introduced in fl as well just to uh, make this adjustable in the uh, whole expression in the form of q. So this minus a can be made by minus a if I multiply it with the same term in the base with bar 1. So it is that desired term and when I uh, multiply it with this term it will become uh, a term with the power of 1 minus a. This term will remain in the denominator as it is because it is not uh, treated with any other term. So now I can see that the term that I generated is common with the other term in the uh, other uh, uh, part of the term that is before plus sign. So I can take it as a common factor, the term which is uh, under this bar. For your uh, ease, I have uh, placed it under this bar. So now it is a common term and remaining terms will appear here. And now uh, simplification should take place. We have written this k raised to the power minus 1 as 1 over k. And these terms are now combined together here. Now it is easier for us to focus on it and take its LCM. The LCM is taken and this would be the result in the numerator of this LCM. You can pause the video and see this simple calculation. And after simplification, these two terms will be cancelled out and we will be left with this. Here, uh, as we were trying to generate 1 minus a in the part, and now we have uh, generated this term. It needs a with it and k raised to the power a with it. So we have brought these two terms together with it and now it is equal to q as I have placed it under the bar for the sake of understanding. Whereas this a is left outside because it is not to be used with it. So now we have uh, this final result after simplification and it also has q in it so that it is easier for us to simplify because this q can be cancelled out uh, in the given formula. Now finally we will recall fl and here we have done this we have recalled fl because we want to calculate the value of flk so we have differentiated fl with respect to k and here the sign has appeared once we look at it it's basically a quotient uh, situation so we apply the quotient rule in it in the numerator we have q so we have written it here and this 1 minus a is treated as a constant, so it appears outside the derivative. Now, this is the derivative of the first term, and the second term, that is the uh, term in the denominator, will be multiplied with it. There will be a minus, and there will be derivative of the term in the denominator, and the numerator will appear in the form of a product with it. This is the denominator square, which appears in this Gaussian formula of differentiation. Once we did this uh, application of the formula, we realize that the derivative of the function is equal to the marginal product of capital, that is fk in this case. Therefore, instead of this, we can write fk here, and this term will remain as it is, whereas the derivative of this term uh, will be equal to ba, um, and this q can be written in its simple form. So this is the simplification we have achieved in this step. Furthermore, when we uh, simplify it, after putting the value of fk that we have found before, uh, there will be some cancellation as you can see, and that cancellation will lead to uh, will lead us to this uh, simplified version. And furthermore, I can take some common factor like a, a is there in both of the terms, q is there in both of the terms, and then we have this uh, remaining term. So further simplification can be done by taking the LCM, which we have done in this step k is the LCM and further simplification is done. You can pause the video and see the development of this numerator. Cancellation will take place in the numerator and after that we will be left with this expression and finally we can write it as the final answer of FLK. 
Now for this formula that we uh, introduced in the beginning is uh, now applicable because we have all the values that we were looking for. For instance, FL is substituted here and FK is substituted here and FLK is also substituted and it appears here. Whereas instead of F, we have written the original function that is Q, which is showing the actual production function. Now you can pause the video and see the cancellation of all these terms, after which only this term, uh, that is the term in the numerator, and this uh, labor will be left. And then you can further simplify it by dividing this labor on both of these terms, so we will get this expression. This expression is actually the elasticity of substitution for a variable elasticity substitution production function between capital and labor because it is not depending upon any parameter only, it is depending upon capital and labor as we have written it here. So this is the formula of elasticity of substitution when we are dealing with VES production function. So after doing all of these calculations, now we are able to calculate the elasticity of substitution for a VES production function. I hope you have liked the video. You may click the thumbs up button. Thank you.